Hi, I'm Nicole Vogelsinger of Wild Boho. Welcome to my embroidery studio. I'm an embroidery artist and today I'm going to be sharing with you several of my favorite pieces that I've stitched over the years, as well as a few cool stitches that you can learn and an embroidery sampler that you can make with them. I'm also going to be sharing with you Daylight Company's Magnificent Lamp. So let's get started. Now that you're in my studio, I'd love to share with you lots of my favorite pieces of embroidery that I've done, many that I just have hanging in here, many that I use for classes. A lot of people ask what to do with embroidery hoops. They're great for gallery walls. They're great to give as presents, fun ways to practice stitches and appreciate your favorite fabrics. They're great ways to use some of your favorite embellishments, beads and florals and sequins. You can sneak little bits of fabric in here. So let's look at these hoops one by one and I'll share some of my favorite pieces of work from my studio. So I'm going to start off with sharing my color wheel hoops, but first let's check out what this Daylight Company Magnificent Lamp can do. So this is the magnifier, which is amazing for handwork. I'm going to show you what it looks like without it. I'll just shift it to the side. You can see how much that lamp really magnified this um, hoop as I was working with it. This is my fractured color wheel pattern made out of fabric. And then this might be one of my favorite hoops. And I'm gonna bring the magnifier, the magnificent lamp back again so that you can see with the light added and the magnification, how much easier it is to see all of this gorgeous, gorgeous detail. This was seriously such a fun project to work on. I was working on this maybe a year ago. Um, the collecting of the buttons and the beads and filling in gaps that I had in my supply was so much fun. And I used my fractured color wheel pattern for this. And then this is the version, this is a very heavy hoop, by the way. I, I don't, I have to be very careful when moving it around because it weighs a ton. And then this is the much lighter all fabric version of that pattern. I used all of the Alice in Glass fabrics for this hoop. And there it is without the light. You can see how much easier it is to work with um, embroidery like this when you have a light and magnification helping you. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is a collage embroidery piece with mixed media. And let's just see what this mag lamp does. Look at that. You can really see a close up of the beads that I used, um, the different threads, all of the detail in this piece. Let's take this away for a minute. There we go. This is my mood sometimes. I think it's our mood as sewers or quilters. When somebody touches our scissors that are just for fabric, you'll get this look, right? If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I absolutely love color. The more color, the more pattern, the better. And I think this hoop really showcases 
um, a lot of what I really enjoy. This is all made with Allison Glass Fabrics. Um, it's a crazy quilt inspired hoop. Let's take a little look at it through the magnificent lamp again. I love seeing the close-ups of all of the different textures in this piece. I included woven bits, um, some of my favorite buttons and beads, little trim pieces. I'll take this away again. If you enjoy uh, crazy quilting, this is a way to make a smaller piece that incorporates all of your favorite things um, and any color that you can add, any beads that you want. Um, it's really, it's a lot of fun to put a piece like this together. This is another fun way that I like to incorporate some of my favorite fabrics into an embroidery hoop. This is a raw edged um, applique, floral applique, and you can actually get the tutorial for these on my YouTube channel so you can make your own. Let's see what it looks like under the magnifying lamp. Okay, now this is what I really have to show you. Look at all of these sequins. So many sequins. I love to use them as detail in the background. So when you're looking at it from a distance, all you see is white, but then when you get close up, you really notice the sparkle of the sequins. I like to do that with beads as well. We'll take that out of here. So again, this is a piece that if you're interested in making these floral um, raw edge appliques, you can easily do that and save some of your favorite bits of fabric and incorporate them in other ways. When I teach embroidery, one of my favorite classes is to have my students pick one piece of fabric and then use that as an embroidery pattern. And that's what I did with this one. This is a fabric from Anna Maria Horner. And let's look at it through the magnifying light. Here we go. So many stitches <laughs> went into this piece. Lots and lots of love and lots of color. Those neon beads were so much fun. Lots of satin stitching. So I love to pick a piece of fabric that I want to see used, but I'm not sure how to use it. I put it in a hoop and that is my palette. I pick colors based on that. I pick beads uh, based on that. And then I just start working with it working stitch by stitch. When I started this piece, I wasn't sure where I was going to go, what I was gonna do with all these butterflies and moths, and it kind of came about as I worked on it. So this is another piece using just one piece of fabric and lots of embroidery thread and beads. After working with so many different types of fabric and collage, I really learned what I liked about fabrics and layering them. And I've started creating my own fabric collages that are all the fun of collage without having to cut up lots of fabric. The collage is done for you, and then you can embroider directly on top of the fabric. So this is my latest one. This one is the last gasp of summer. I've created lots of embroidery videos on YouTube, so you can watch them anytime and learn lots of these stitches. Let's take a look at that, this again through the lamp. This lamp is great because it lets me see some of these more detailed areas, lets my eyes relax a little bit after spending hours doing embroidery. It's really nice to feel like I'm not straining. Here's my other piece. You can see I really had fun with beads in this one. This along here is one of my favorite bits. All the beads that I added in there. So these are also both available in my Etsy shop. 
and you can watch lots of videos on YouTube and learn how to do the stitches that I did. This is a work in progress piece. I don't want you to think that I have one project that I work on at a time and then I start the next one. I have a stack of projects that I'm working on at any given time, but this is one that I like to take when I'm traveling. Um, it's a good, it's a good one that I, you know, just work on little bits and pieces here and there. And then I come back to it with fresh ideas. Let's see. This, yes, again, this is an Anna Maria Horner fabric. And if this one was ever re-released, I would buy loads of it because it is one of my favorite fantasy-ish pieces from her. And it was really fun adding a lot of these details. Again, this one's not finished. I'm not sure where I'm going with it yet, but I'm not really stressed about that. I've got plenty of other projects I'm working on and I will come back to this when I have fresh ideas. These three hoops um, are among some from my second book, Boho Embroidery, the Pattern Collection. But what I like to do is take a piece of fabric and just use one embroidery stitch to practice the stitch but also to create a, a completed hoop with just one stitch. So these are, let's look at them through the magnifying lamp because how fun is that? All right, so we've got, this one is one of my very favorite fabrics with the double lazy daisy. There we go, that's better. So we've got the double lazy daisy here, which you can, through this lamp, you can really see the layers of color that I built into this. So another fun way to play with fabric and thread, pick a piece of your favorite fabric, pick one embroidery stitch, one that you're either good at or you want to get better at, and play with using just one stitch in a piece of embroidery and seeing what, what you can come up with is really fun. This is my floral embroidery sampler that I'm gonna share with you today. There are eight stitches that make up this sampler and you can find more information about this free download on my website. Today I'm going to be showing you how to stitch the foundation of this hoop, which was the net stitch. You can see it stitched along the bottom there. It's also stitched in a leaf shape along there. So let's get started. So the first stitch that I'm going to show you in this floral hoop is the net stitch. The net stitch starts with a foundation of stem stitch, which you can see I've stitched around the hoop. This is gonna be the bottom of my hoop at the end, but I'm stitching it upside down just because it's easiest to show you how to stitch it that way. So you're gonna to want to put down a row of stem stitch wherever you want your net stitch to be. And then I'm bringing my needle up right at the beginning of this stem stitch row now all of these stitches are going to be worked on top of the fabric. The only time you're going through the fabric is at the very beginning and the very end of your row of stitches. So I'm taking my needle and I'm going under this first stem stitch and then I'm going to pull my thread through. I've used a longer thread than I normally would recommend using but I wanna make sure that I have enough thread to do a whole row of this net stitch and not have to run out halfway through my stitches. So now you can see I'm not pulling it super tight here. I'm just loosely pulling it through. I'm holding my thread down with my right hand and then my left hand is gonna make the next stitch. 
So you can see I'm going over this thread that's already here, and then I'm taking my needle and thread through and just gently pulling on that. And you can see it's starting to make a loop. So then I'm gonna gently hold this thread down again. When you use more thread, I normally recommend about, I'd say 12 inches of thread when you're stitching something. Um, but right now I'm working with about 24 inches. You do, it is, easier to get tangles so I'm just taking it nice and slow as I run through these stitches and you can see each one is just worked to the same exact way I'm just gently pulling it down your first row you're gonna see it wants to lift up here that's okay because that will correct itself the more weight that you have on it from all of the stitches that follow it holds it in place So I am going to keep stitching this row of stitches exactly the same way. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to add your second row of stitches when you have your first net stitch row down. I do want to talk you through ending a row of net stitch. So I've come to the end of my first row and you can see this is my end stem stitch row and this is the thread and needle from the end of my net stitch row all i'm going to do at this part at this point is take my needle and thread down right near the end of that stem stitch and i'm just lightly pulling it in you can see this has now um, made this row a little flatter i turn over my hoop now, the first row is a, a little tricky to do this because your stitches, if you're stitching it on the edge of a hoop like this, everything is very close together. And it's close to the end of the hoop, which is a little tricky. So basically, all I'm going to do is tie a knot. I'm going to run my thread through the last few stitches that I have here. And I'm just securing this with a knot. I typically don't use a knot when I'm finishing a row of embroidery, but this this is a woven stitch. It's kind of a delicate stitch. I don't want it to pull out at all. So yeah, I just did a little knot there. Then I cut the thread and then I'm ready to start my, stack, my second net stitch row. I also wanted to mention, I didn't say anything before about the type of thread that I'm using. This is a variegated, um, size eight pearl cotton and doing the net stitch with a variegated uh, thread is really cool because you get to see a variety of color it makes it look way more complicated <laughs> it looks like you've changed colors throughout but you didn't um, so this is one of the Sue Spargo colors uh, made by Wonderfill Specialty Threads it's one of my favorite pearl cottons and it's a size eight you can also vary the look of this stitch by using a thicker thread. But right now I just wanted to show you with a, a standard pearl cotton what it's gonna look like. So that's the thread I'm using. Now I'm gonna start my second row of net stitch. So I've brought my um, thread and needle up again, just like before when I went to start my first row. And I am doing the same exact thing. Instead of running my stitches through the stem stitch. I'm getting myself all confused with stitches. I'm going to bring this mag light over so that you can see, oops, let's turn that off, a little clearer what I'm doing here. I'm taking my needle and thread through the first row of net stitches. So it's the straight part of your net stitch. And once you start to do this, it makes sense. It sounds a little complicated when I'm saying it, but it's not really. Okay, so let me start that over so I don't mess it up. I'm going under the straight bar and over this thread that I'm holding here. And remember, I have a nice long strand of thread because I don't want to run out during this row. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. 
I'm not pulling it super tight because I want to see those little loops. So under that bar and then over this thread that I'm holding, my current working thread. And then I pull it gently through. This is a more delicate stitch. Um, no matter how careful you are with it, until you, if you want it to be really, really secure, I'll show you at the end how you can go through and um, tack it to your fabric almost. But this is a, it's, you're going to want to be careful with this piece. It's not going to be one that you just want to stick in your project bag and let it rub up with other things because they will catch on this stitch. So it's, it's a, it's a more delicate, very fancy looking stitch. So you just want to be careful with it as you're working with it. Maybe this isn't the hoop that you play Frisbee with. Hopefully you don't play Frisbee with your hoops, but this is the one you want to be a little bit more careful with. So I'm just going to keep doing this. And then when I finish this row, I'm going to fin work on the third row. Start it exactly how I did the second row. And I'm going to work several more rows. And then I'll come back and show you how you can secure your net stitch to the fabric and even add some beads throughout. So here is my net stitch, all stitched up. I'm only doing a little section of it down at the bottom. And when you're done stitching this, you may notice I'm gonna use my scissors here just to show you that when I go underneath of it, it completely lifts up from the fabric. That's because you stitched the whole thing above the fabric. And now the cool thing about this is you can kind of adjust it where you want it to very carefully because you don't want to stretch your stitches out. But I will sometimes just go along here and press a few of the stitches into shape. Now I do want mine to stay on the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is just anchor a few spots along here and I'm gonna do it with a bead. So I'm bringing my thread and needle up through the fabric. I'm gonna add a size eight seed bead put it on the needle, and then I'm just gonna pick a random loop and go over the loop. And then you'll see I have a bead right here. It adds a little sparkle to this, and it also just makes sure that it's not gonna catch on anything and pull off of the fabric. So that's how you can secure the net stitch before you stitch any flowers or vines on your floral. So I showed you today how to stitch the foundation stitch of this hoop. We did the net stitch along the bottom. You also can see the net stitch is in these leaves here. There are eight stitches total that make up this embroidery hoop. We have the closed fishbone stitch along here and the open one along here. We have the maidenhair stitch the feather stitch right here with colonial knots. There are also seed beads added. And there are lazy daisies. And there is um, the ribbed spider web stitch. I like this stitch to add little flowers to your embroidery. So this pattern can be found on my website. And you can also find a wrap up of thread that I did because that is a question that I'm asked a lot. The threads that I used for this project, here they all are, are the Eleganza threads made by Wonderfill Specialty Thread. You can see the purple spools here are a size five pearl cotton. That's like the mid size pearl cotton. There's also a size three. That's the blue spool here. I use those to stitch this hoop. And then as far as beads, I used a size eight seed bead. Seed beads can be found in almost every craft store. And basically you just pick the colors that you like. So you can see my finished hoop here. We'll bring the light back so you can see it even better. And for more details, you can visit my website, wildboho.com.
Thank you for watching along with me today.